When designing an ordinary structure on reasonably firm soil, it's adequate to provide an individual footing for each column. This type of foundation is known as an isolated footing. Isolated footings are usually square or rectangular in shape. In this video, we will explore some essential key points that need to be taken into consideration when designing an eccentric isolated footing. When the load is transferred to the foundation level, the bearing pressure of soil causes the base of the footing to bend upwards. To counteract this, reinforcement is added at the bottom of the footing slab. The pressure distribution of soil at the base of footing is often non-uniform and it depends on the rigidity of footing and the soil properties. For simplicity, a linear distribution of soil pressure is commonly assumed while designing the footing. Besides the load that's transferred from column, the self-weight of footing and the weight of backfill is also transferred to the soil. For initial calculations, the combined weight of footing and backfill are assumed to be 10 to 15% of the column load. In a symmetrically loaded footing, the gross soil pressure is equal to the column load plus the combined weight of footing and backfill upon the area of footing. The minimum area required for the footing can be calculated as column load plus the combined weight of footing and backfill divided by the allowable soil bearing capacity. In eccentric footings, the load from the column acts eccentrically with respect to the centroid of footing. This eccentricity can arise due to one or more of the following reasons. The column transmitting a moment M in addition to the axial load P. Here eccentricity E is equal to moment M upon axial load P. The second reason is that the column transmitting a vertical load P at an offset of E from the centroid of footing. The third reason is Column transmitting a vertical load P combined with a lateral force H above the foundation level. Let's consider a column transmitting an axial load P with a uniaxial moment M. This moment introduces an additional eccentricity E. If this eccentricity lies within the mid third of the footing, that's E is less or equal to L by 6, the footing experiences a non uniform upward soil pressure across its entire contact area. However, if E is greater than L by 6, negative soil pressure develops, leading to areas of the footing losing contact with the soil. To counter this, the footing area must be increased to bring the eccentricity within the mid-third and maintain positive soil pressure, ensuring stability. To minimize tilting under sustained eccentric loads, the footing base can be shifted laterally relative to the column. For example, if the moment M is due to dead loads and is irreversible, the footing can be shifted in the direction of eccentricity to achieve a uniform pressure distribution. For clockwise moments, the footing moves right. For anticlockwise moments, it moves left. However, if the moment is due to reversible loads like wind or seismic forces, shifting the footing is not advisable. In such cases, a symmetrical footing relative to the column is preferred ensuring the eccentricity remains within the mid-third to avoid negative soil pressure. When a column is placed along a property line, the footing may be at the edge. Here it's better to combine the footing with the adjacent column's footing, forming a combined footing. Alternatively, the eccentric footing can be connected to the adjacent footing using a strap beam, distributing the load effectively. This configuration is called a strap footing. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Civil Tutor for much more informative and interesting content. Thank you.